After you create a site and request that you create custom permissions, you'll then be asked to give permissions to groups. You can either create a new group specific to your site or use an existing group from another site. It's important here to go over what the basic settings are for each of the three groups. First off, visitors to the site by default can read content on the site. Second, members of the site have a little bit more permission in that they can contribute to the site. They can add documents, they can edit documents, and they can take documents away. Finally, owners of the site have full control over the site and any of its settings as well as the share permissions for the site. With those permissions in mind, you may want to take the time now to relabel what level you want your students and teachers at. For my blog site, because I want my students blogging on the site, I'm going to make them members, so I'll put students in the group name. Because I only want teachers and any other invited staff members to change site-wide settings or add members to my groups, I'm going to label that one teachers. In order to add users to certain groups, I need to first start typing out their names. I can then check the spelling and associate that user by using the check names button below each box. The other option is to use the directory and search under the tenants. When I double click on a tenant, they're added to the box below. Once I click OK, those users are then added to that group. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to just erase any group names and add them later.